At the height of his reign, the natural king had subdued all beneath his boots. His earthly mandate struck in punitive action all subjects, virtuous and evil. The empress had as many hanged as she had nurtured from her womb and breast. The conglomerate was the largest and most efficient yet seen. Each continent an independent manufactory, producing a life force upon which itself was immediately sustained. A metropolis spread out on an endless spherical plain, stretching from canals deep towards the core of its canvas to superstructures bruising the last layers of the habitable environment. The only true fault of her cruel majesty was the failure to provide room for internal advancement. It was never predicted that one would supersede their placement in the predatory system, and further less foreseen that one may devise parameters for success beyond the school of wisdom held by the king. A prescription to this end shifts an animal's wrestle for survival to a campaign for the crown of earth's authority. The struggle with nature has reached its final act. She persists now only at the outskirts of our residential zones and in the regions necessarily declared for wild activity. Yet even in these sanctuaries, the breath of human supremacy continues to brown leaves and cloud rivers. The last breaths of Gaia are felt here, in the borders of small-town suburbia. An inkling of the formerly untamable force lives now only through weeds in haphazard clamouring. Mountains and hills stand now only as the foundation for our towers. The thought of a cigarette lighter in the foliage is not a consideration of the impact of plastic, flint and butane on the earth, but an inquiry into whether or not there may be enough fuel for the passerby to spark a flame, and then if not, a consideration on how far the peace can be thrown further into the wilderness. Once the scales tipped, and steel, rubber, and plastic had claimed more lives than nature had, there no longer stood a worthy enemy in the sky and wind. Civilization no longer bows its head to deities of the weather. What was once a dynamic relationship with thunder is now but an occasional collision, restricted to few temporal and geographic contexts. The Homo sapien has given way to a creature unbound by the primitive inhibitions of its ancestors, and this beast's granddaughters will feel the same distance from today's population in what has become an exponential chart of worldly dislocation. Green has been pushed to the outer regions and sedated with pollutant injections. Its internal structures have begun to collapse and it lies gasping on the floor of the hospital. Sincere attempts to respirate the shriveled mass stand in futility against the cancers spread moss-like across her anatomy. The final traces of an ancient empire have begun to crumble and have begun to dull. Green has become grey. Snails die on sheared grass. Ants forage on concrete fields. Kangaroos bounce in pastoral grounds. And birds bathe in dust. The exiled emperor lays upon a bed of stone and closes his eyes as he himself begins to drift towards vapour.